breaking news from KXAN News. And we do begin with breaking news. Austin Travis County EMS is responding to a crash involving a CAP Metro Metro Access vehicle. Now that is not a bus, but a smaller van. Those vehicles are usually for people with disabilities. Now this crash happened near Knuckles Crossing Road and South Pleasant Valley Road. Four ambulances have taken seven patients to the hospital. Those patients though are expected to be okay. We will keep you updated as we learn more. We have more breaking news tonight at 5. Outside of the Circuit of the Americas tonight, Austin Travis County EMS sent Starflight to this area. They are seeing reports of a crash involving several vehicles. EMS tweeted there are at least five patients involved, including two children. EMS apparently took those kids and two adults to the hospital. Everyone, fortunately, is expected to be okay. To our other top story tonight, on the heels of Austin ISD educators learning they are getting a 7% raise, they are still waiting for the Texas legislature to get a bill addressing teacher pay to the governor's desk. KXN investigator Kelly Wiley has been following the growing shortage of teachers in public schools since last August. She reports more educators are planning their exits now. After 25 years in retirement, former kindergarten teacher Lisa Mosley and her two friends made a pact to come back to teaching. It was at the same time as thousands were leaving the profession. You know, it, it wasn't a, so, a thing that we were looking for a job or we were looking for something to do. It's that we felt like we were needed again. At the time, AISD was amid a historic retention crisis with hundreds of classroom positions unfilled at the start of the school year. And the problem has not let up. We have uh, certain grades where we've had permanent subs all year. Hours after our interview, AISD trustees unanimously approved spending $53 million of the district's reserve funds to give teachers and school employees a raise. The board president said in a statement to KXAN, there's a little bit of risk with this budget, but there's a real risk of not educating our students. Miles away at Round Rock ISD, its board members also approved a 3% raise for its teachers and librarians. But at the Capitol, after months of promising teacher retention was a top priority, and with 10 days left until the end of the session, Texas lawmakers have yet to get one bill addressing teacher pay to the governor's desk. I feel like they're not focusing on the main issue. I think the teachers need more money. The legislators are not addressing that. She and others at her school plan to stay, but she also says many teachers she knows across the state say they will leave. I would say our future is hangs in the balance. Right now, our, the teaching industry, the education industry is in free fall. And if something is not done immediately, it's almost too late. There are three bills that have a chance at passing that would give some sort of increase in pay. House Bill 11, Senate Bill 9, and House Bill 100, although they are not all popular with educator advocacy groups. None, though, have been approved by both the House and Senate. Education experts say there is a possibility a pay raise could come through the state budget, which is also not fully approved. But it's not clear what the chances of that happening are. Kelly Wiley. KXAN investigates. Hi, Kelly, thank you very much. And a bill aimed at protecting Texas patients from potentially dangerous doctors sparked by a series of KXAN investigations is one step closer to becoming law. The Senate Health and Human Services Committee held a last minute hearing today voting House Bill 1998 out of committee. The bill introduced by Democratic Representative Julie Johnson of Dallas would make lying on license applications a crime. It would also prevent doctors who've had licenses revoked in other states from practicing in Texas. And it would require constant monitoring of physicians with the National Practitioner Data Bank, which they would pay for. Johnson credits are still practicing investigations for this bill, which now goes to a full Senate vote. That's all we want is the proper protection of the people of Texas. Because after all, that is the role of government, is the protection of people. Now, this bill has the support of the Texas Medical Board. The last day for the Senate to consider all bills, though, is next Wednesday. If it passes, it then goes to the governor. First warning weather with Chief Meteorologist David Yeomans.
later this evening, but in the hill country, we are more concerned with severe thunderstorms capable of hail up to egg size and near hurricane force winds and also flash flooding overnight tonight. A severe thunderstorm watch in effect only for the hill country, not right now for the Austin area until 10 p.m. Austin, most of us are dry, but well northwest of town, we have a new severe thunderstorm warning. These storms in McCulloch County finally starting to kick eastward into San Saba County in San Saba, Richland Springs and everywhere south of that. This new warning includes you for the possibility of hail up to golf ball size through 6 p.m. Now is the time to move your car and your animals under cover or protect them however appropriate. You see the hail core now starting to move across the county line into the San Saba County area. We're looking at those storms from a good distance here on the Granite Shoals camera. You can see that dark anvil of the thunderstorm in the distance. It's hot out there ready to make some storms. 90 in Austin and in Georgetown. Coming up in your forecast, I'll show you the timeline and who is and who is not affected by these tonight. The flash flood threat and much cooler weather this weekend. David, thank you so much. In the first week since the U.S. changed its border policy, the number of encounters between migrants and authorities at the U.S. southern border has fallen. According to Customs and Border Protection, there was an average of 4,400 encounters between ports of entry per day since May 12th. Over the past two days, the figure is about 3,000 encounters, which the government says is down 70 percent compared to the final two days before the lifting of Title 42. That was the U.S. policy that turned away some asylum seekers at the border. And this comes as an eight-year-old girl died yesterday in Border Patrol custody. Her family migrated from Central America to the United States. Anadith Alvarez is the second child in recent weeks to die in custody of immigration officials. A 17-year-old boy from Honduras died last week in Florida. Now, migrant advocates blamed the deaths on conditions of the facilities. Officials say Alvarez and her family were being held at a Border Patrol station in Harlingen when she suffered a medical emergency. The girl's father told agents she was born with heart issues. U.S. Customs and Border Patrol says they are investigating the little girl's death. Governor Greg Abbott visited the border in Brownsville today to try to draw attention to the efforts made to secure it. Now, he says he's working on new laws as the legislative session comes to a close to protect the state and the country. One is we are seeking to make it a felony for anybody to cross into the state of Texas illegally. So in addition to what we currently have in place, we would also be able to begin arresting people for crossing into our state illegally and put them behind bars for a very long time. Governor Abbott also wants a law to create a mandatory minimum sentence of 10 years behind bars for anyone caught smuggling people illegally in the state of Texas. We want to get back to that breaking news we brought you at the top of the newscast along Knuckles Crossing and South Pleasant Valley Road. Here is a live picture for you. Austin Travis County EMS is responding to a crash involving a CAP Metro Metro Axis vehicle. As you can see, that's one of the smaller vehicles right there. Uh, those vehicles are usually used for people with disabilities. Now, according to investigators, seven people have been taken to the hospital. Four ambulances have responded to the scene. The good news there, though, those patients are expected to be okay. You can see some damage there to the front passenger side of that vehicle. We'll get you updates as they come into our newsroom. Well, something many people use every single day is causing bacterial infections and sometimes even worse. An update on the eye drops doctors want you to steer clear of. And President Biden is dealing with troubles at home while in a different country. The latest on the debt ceiling debate. The family and supporters of Rodney Reed rallied outside the Court of Criminal Appeals today. Now, it's part of a two-day call for action for a new trial. The rally began yesterday, which was the 25th anniversary of the day a jury sentenced Reed to death for the 1996 murder of Stacey Stites in Bastrop County. On November 15, 2019, just days before Reed's scheduled execution, the Texas Parole Board denied a recommendation of clemency and at the same time recommended Governor Abbott grant a 120-day reprieve. A short time later, the Texas Court of Criminal Appeals issued a stay and sent the case back to the trial court. In 2021, as we reported, the judge recommended against giving Reed a new trial, a new and fair trial. A decision on a new trial, though, could come from the court at any time.
The number of people with highly drug-resistant bacterial infections linked to contaminated eye drops has risen to 81. And here's what's terrible, four people have died. According to the CDC, the 81 cases up from 68 in March, including 14 people who have been blinded and four others who have had to have their eyeballs surgically removed. Though most infections have been limited to the eyes, the bacteria can be fatal when it enters the bloodstream. While the infections have not been definitively traced to Ezra Care artificial tears, the brand was connected to those infected. The CDC and the FDA have urged people to just stop using these. Cases have been discovered in 18 states, including here in Texas. Well, it's expensive to see your favorite artists in concert these days. After the break, the lawmakers pushing to make it easier to know just how much you'll have to pay right up front. And the hottest day of the week today, as Austin's high temperatures have thus far soared to 92 degrees. No rain falling into the lakes during the daytime today, but continued inflows from things like the Llano River bumping Travis up another inch. Long way to go, but we may make some progress on that tonight. I'll show you where the heaviest rain falls coming up. Senator John Cornyn visited the live music capital of the world. Of course, we're talking about Austin. He was here today talking about new legislation that he's introducing in Congress to make it less stressful to get concert and live performance tickets. Our Capitol correspondent Monica Madden tells us how it could address flaws in the ticketing system and resale market. Fans who want to get a seat for a show here at Moody Center typically have to go through great lengths just to get that ticket. It's why Senator John Cornyn says there needs to be congressional reform in how we sell tickets in America. Clearly the, the model that's being used now uh, is broken. One of the things that became obvious to me is that uh, the fans weren't benefiting and secondly the artists or the performers were not benefiting. Cornyn says the fans first act would improve transparency for ticket pricing. It would require sites like Ticketmaster to disclose total cost of a ticket, including fees up front. It would also increase civil penalties for bad actors who engage in predatory ticket sales practices, like selling fake tickets or price gouging. Texas's senior senator toured the Moody Center after a roundtable about the bill with music and sports industry leaders, including a local Taylor Swift fan who was one of the Many frustrated by the price gouging and Ticketmaster crash when sales of Swift's Eras tour opened up. I look at it as like a, a lifelong memory that I missed and an opportunity that I just wasn't able to make and I'm still still really disappointed. Senator Cornyn has yet to officially file the Fans First Act, but with bipartisan support, he feels confident that this is meaningful change that Congress can make to America's ticketing system. At the Moody Center, Monica Madden, Back to you. All right, Monica, thank you very much. And tickets for Stevie Nicks at the Moody Center went on sale today. And at last check, the lowest price for one ticket was $146 in the upper sections. Floor tickets start at around $267, but that does not include any taxes or fees. And some of them are verified resale. Well, for Stevie, it's probably worth it, right? I would say so, actually. <laughs> yeah. A lot of money. Well, so if folks are on their way out the door yes. for some fun tonight, what should they experience? It's hot and humid now, but some of us are going to have a pretty stormy night. Now, it looks right now like most of this, if not all of these storms, stay in the hill country as opposed to bothering your activities in Austin. Here we are, a little north northwest of town on the Liberty Hill Whittlesey Landscape Supply Cam. And if you look closely past this little obstruction, look at this thunderstorm structure. This is the classic anvil, the towering cumulus underneath. These are some pretty good severe thunderstorms that are firing way out in the hill country, and these will eventually cluster up and affect more of us west of the Austin area. Here's Austin, Round Rock, everybody dry in the metro, but this is the severe thunderstorm warning that continues for San Saba County. Golf ball size hail, dangerous lightning with this storm that's slowly moving eastward and the line is trying to fill in southward into Mason County. So far, these have just been little pulse storms, not really maintaining any uh, significant intensity quite yet. These little storms are associated with a boundary that's in our area, but we've got a lot going on. More storms firing in the Big Bend, a little cold front quietly moving through the panhandle. I say little, but this thing is pretty significant for May. It's 59 degrees in Amarillo, while it's 94 out ahead of it in San Angelo. As these elements come together, we do have a two out of five risk of seeing hail and wind damage from the storms from Austin westward through the hill country. I'm a little more concerned not only with some large hail out west, but with a flash flood threat 
overnight tonight. It's minimal in Austin, but with the heaviest rain focusing in the Highland Lakes watershed, this is a mix of good and bad news. As we often see, we'd love to get the rivers flowing into the lakes, but we don't want to flood low water crossings in rural areas at night. That can lead to a very dangerous situation. So let me show you the brand new 5 p.m. model run just came in and I think it's showing what we expect well through the weekend. Here we are now with that line of storms trying to fill in. It starts to crawl eastward, but remember these strong to severe storms that will be capable of hail and wind damage. They really are not very successful in coming into the Austin area. It's possible Austin gets a couple lightning strikes by 9 p.m., maybe some light rain, but the storms really decay quickly as they cross into Travis County after 9 p.m. Keep your eye out west a second complex of powerful thunderstorms with some welcome heavy rain falling pretty widespread in the hill country these may clip the austin area but again they too stay mainly out west by tomorrow morning we're cooler we're cloudy but not a lot of rain left notice the forecast tomorrow still mainly dry under a mix of clouds and sun let me show you how on sunday another little disturbance comes in we may see this light rain southwest of our area coming back in at times overall sunday looks a little cloudier with a slightly higher 30% chance of some passing rain. Obviously not a washout either, so most of your plans should be okay. Now, rainfall through Sunday night, 99% of this falling tonight through tomorrow morning, one to three inches in the hill country where it's needed most, lower amounts in Austin, and not much falling at all in our eastern counties. Weekend forecast, not only mostly cloudy both days with a couple light showers, but so much cooler than we have been. A high of 82 Saturday, highs in the 70s on Sunday. We may not get another weekend this cool until the fall, so enjoy it while we got it. Okay, tonight 65 degrees with rain likely mainly in the hill country. North winds blow in tomorrow, dropping temperatures, dropping the humidity a little. High temperatures reach 82 with a 20% chance of a little rain. A little cloudier, slightly higher chance of a shower on Sunday. Then the May heat returns right on schedule. 90 degrees or better for most of next week with just a few more slight chances of rain. We're coming right back. President Biden is meeting with world leaders today in Japan, but hanging over his trip is the fast approaching debt limit deadline. Alice Barr looks at why some conservative lawmakers say they won't even come back to the bargaining table. President Biden today meeting with key allies at the G7 summit in Japan, but troubles back home on the debt ceiling debate could weaken his position with world leaders as he seeks to lead a global coalition, countering China's growing power and bolstering support for Ukraine against the Russian invasion. I hope that most of us are here for the sake of peace and justice. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky addressing the Arab League summit today before he's set to join the G7 in Japan. The U.S. and allies now agreeing to Zelensky's long-held plea to provide American-made F-16 fighter jets, though details on which countries will send the planes and when are still being worked out. The G7 leaders also agreeing to a new raft of sanctions against Russia. While back on Capitol Hill, agreement on the debt limit could be slipping away. We've got to get movement by the White House and we don't have any movement yet. So, uh, yeah, we're going to pause. Republican leaders walked away from negotiations earlier today calling the White House unreasonable. We're not going to sit here and talk to ourselves. Conservatives in the House Freedom Caucus are calling for no further talks until the Senate passes a House Republican approved bill that ties a debt ceiling increase to steep spending cuts. Imposing draconian cuts on some of the most desperate people in this country. But the White House could lose some progressives if a final deal includes social safety net changes like stricter work requirements for SNAP food security. In Washington, Alice Barr, NBC News. Some Democrats are now urging President Biden to invoke the 14th Amendment, letting him act alone to prevent a catastrophic default on the nation's loans. Though the White House said today the president's team is working hard towards a reasonable bipartisan solution that can pass the House and Senate. Well, tonight on KXAN, it's That's My Jam at 7 o'clock, and then that all-new two-hour dateline on the Idaho murders at 8 o'clock before we're back with KXAN News at 10. Or join us an hour earlier for KXAN News at 9 on the CW Austin, and here's where to find us. Thanks for listening to KXAN News Nightly. You can also listen to KXAN News Today every morning for more in-depth coverage of what matters most to you.